Oh my god. <sighs> Perfect. Venture down a little and then I'll stop. First hit back. We've arrived at the home of some really steep turns. We just want to give you a little context as to what steep is, because sometimes cameras don't do it justice. What's up, Linnea? That's three turns down. Let's do this. All right, so steep switchbacks, like, like we promised. Uh, this one's steep, right? <laughs> it's pretty steep. Uh, we've got a lot of embedded rock here as well. A lot of different ways that we could go about this turn. Um, so we'll take a good cl uh, close up look at this turn, but I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what we might do and how we're gonna employ a pre-turn here. So coming into this zone, um, it's, it's super steep, obviously, and pretty intimidating. You're coming in here and you kind of want to beeline for the inside. That's kind of what your brain wants is just to get down and get it over with. But really the idea here is to kind of start to swing that front wheel up a little bit. Now this is going to be super, super subtle when I come through here. If I, if I was to come into here and not pre-turn, I could probably get away with it just because we have a nice, we have nice backing and support. So I could come through directly through here and actually just use that kind of like a berm. But what I'd prefer to do most likely, I will see when I actually ride it, um, is to come into here and make a little bit of, for me, um, since I'm left foot forward, a little bit of a front foot turn, get that front wheel a little bit high, and then I'm just gonna turn my body. And the only thing that I'm gonna focus on here is monitoring the health, control, and modulation of my front wheel. The back wheel is like a trailer, it's behind me. So I'm not trying to pick a line here for the front wheel and the back wheel, I'm just trying to get my front wheel and my body through here. The back wheel is gonna be behind me when I get through. The thing that riders really struggle with when it comes to these really, really steep switchbacks is the moment of commitment. And the moment of commitment is the moment I turn from my pre-turn foot to my turning foot. And there's this moment where I have to just kind of fall into the hill and give in. And when I'm coaching riders on steep terrain, that's where I see them kind of choke the most is like right in that moment where they need to go from one direction to the other. They might either like start to do it and then not actually commit to it or then maybe they start to do it and then they kind of get scared and they start doing too much hand steering and they get that jackknifing that we don't want. So uh, really important here that we switch over kind of quickly. So when I'm finishing here on my left foot, I'm gonna move to my right foot fairly directly. So I'm really gonna try to get to foot from foot to foot without a long delay because I don't wanna run through too much vertical in between the control mechanism that I'm gonna get by, by having that foot pressure on each foot. It's also having that foot pressure is gonna allow me to turn my hips, which is really critical here, especially with how steep it is. So again, the goal here is to get through cleanly, obviously. And I don't wanna get like into a jackknife situation in the, in the kind of a true apex of the turn, which is where, this, where the backing and support is built up down here. So I don't wanna just run into that for a couple reasons. One is it's gonna be a little bit slow uh, for people who are racers. The other reason is I don't wanna actually be hand steering with that much compression. This is very steep in here and if I've got some hand steer going, I'm probably gonna get flipped over. So uh, in an effort to not turn too much from the handlebars, I'm gonna be thinking about turning from my body on the way in and then turning it with my body on the way through. It's just gonna give me a little less hand steer and a little bit, hopefully less opportunity for like a jackknife and, and uh, going over. It's uh, not a place that we wanna Experiment with that. All right, well, if that was first time through, it's steep. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, any questions? So it looks like there's, there's three lines, like you mentioned. We've got the general public line on the inside that works, but it jackknifes. And then there's the kind of slight pre-turn line that brings you around really nicely. And then here's the World Cup line where it, you just carry a lot of speed. 
Yeah, you need full commitment there because otherwise you're gonna you're gonna unstick on that on that crude, very crude berm. It's not a berm; it's just a bunch of rocks and stuff. Yeah. So you'd need a lot of commitment to carry that outside line. It's surprisingly comfortable. I mean, considering how much rain we had last night, it's it's actually pretty tacky. Um, that inside line, the one that you mentioned, the the public line, it's to me that scares me more than the pre-turn line, just because it's there's quite a bit of pressure there. You're, you're smaller than me, so you weigh less and your bike's a lot shorter, yeah. you can totally do that line. You're just gonna have to go pretty slowly through it. Mm -hmm. um, the the pre-turn line that I did takes a little bit of commitment, but I didn't, I didn't go crazy with it first time through. Yeah, I feel like I wanna try a, the variety pack. You wanna try what? The variety pack. You're gonna try it all? Yeah. All right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's a little sketchy. <laughs> okay, when they uh, look graceful. <laughs> oh, my God. Nice one. Perfect. That was felt so smooth. That was so perfect, Linnea. Like you got didn't even look like you hit a rock in there. It was just like, so I I cut in like a foot sooner than you did. So it widened it a little yeah. bit, which I think yours got a better pre-turn, but mine was just like yours fewer rocks. Yours was more rocks. open. Like I feel like you got a more of a tracking turn and I had more of an offset wheel path turn. Yeah. Like yours actually looked like textbook smooth. It was super fast, super smooth, and it looked really comfortable. It didn't look like technical or in any way intimidating when you rode it, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, I felt really good about that. Yeah, you're good doing Anne Carol and Chausson proud. So <laughs> this is the training grounds of Nico Voyo and Anne Carol and Chausson. I, I guess they used to train here in the 90s, which is incredible to think about with the technology increases we've had. Um, you know, I think he was 10 time world champion, a few junior worlds and a bunch of a bunch of elite world championships. And then Anne Carol probably had at least as many, if not more. One of the things that's really important here when we're making these steep, tight turns, especially when it's a bit greasy uh, like it is today, is we don't want to be on the front brake when we're actually in the turn itself. So I'm coming down here, I'm picking my braking point before, you know, I'm starting to brake pretty hard before my pre-turn even. And I might have both brakes on a little bit during my pre-turn, but as I move from my pre-turn and rotate my hips into the turn, I'm actually, in most of these sections, completely releasing my front brake and that's helping to kind of bring the, the back wheel around. The reason that, that we want we, that we don't want to be on the front brake in these moments is just because the bars are turned a little bit coming down here. 
and it's pretty steep so all that pressure on the front wheel could really result in a washout pretty quickly so uh, doing our best to steer with our bodies but there is a bit of hand steer happening here and when that's happening generally speaking we want to be off the front brake oh my god like when we first got here i was like oh crap can i ride this and honestly it's just getting to be so much fun like places you don't think you could get rhythm with this footwork you're just like oh man this is just a blast it feels like a bobsled run or something down here now it's it's really pretty gnarly when you slow down and look at it but when you've got the big picture in mind and you're just going through the things you know and you're doing it correctly it actually rides like a dream right at that moment of where i'm committing from my pre-turn to my turn in that moment i'm going to let off the front brake and that's going to allow that back end to come around. It really helps that, just that little flick helps to get the back wheel around in a situation like this, you know? So, because these are, this is technically a switchback turn here. I do need an offset wheel path here, but if I want to go through here quickly, I definitely need a bit of that Scandi flick, a bit of that, you know, and that's really where it came from. Like the Scandi flick name came from Scandinavian rally drivers. And back in the day, they used to have the old school handbrake. They used to pull it, they'd set up pre-turn and they'd pull the handbrake and scoot the back end around. And the, back, the handbrake was attached to the back wheels. And so that's really what we're doing here. We're getting a bit of that Scandi flick. We're coming in, letting off the front brake. As that back brake's still on and my body's rotating, that kicks the back wheel out. But it's not really like a physical push. I'm already making that motion. And this is just happening because of a combination of speed and some braking. So this isn't something that we're trying to do to look cool. Definitely not trying to damage the trails, but it's just a way to ride this quickly and with control and confidence. <laughs> So Kyle, you were asking earlier, like, you know, like what I wanted to do when I was a kid and I told you I didn't know, I knew I wanted to be a pro athlete and something just triggered in my brain while we were riding this when Linnea got that last lap through and got up on the wall there. My mom used to take me to the fair and I used to see the guys at the circus like on mopeds and stuff sticking to the wall and I was like, that's what I want to do for a living. I remember when I was like in the second grade, I thought that'd be pretty cool. I, we're just both getting one of these moments here trusting the speed and sticking to the wall for a minute makes it actually easier than going slowly let's do this 